Hi, I'm Iris Fritz. I'm with the Elfman Student Success Center at Dunwoody College of Technology. And I'm here today to talk to you about the relationship of Ohm's Law in a series circuit and in a parallel circuit. Okay, well the first thing, I, I hope you're fe getting a feel for what we had just talked about, this idea of using current flow to do work for us and harnessing the energy, if you will, the work that we can get from something like this by putting resistors in the way and resisting the flow of the electron enough to create some friction because that's what we're doing. We are harnessing energy from current flow. If I draw a simple series circuit, and by now you should be able to recognize that this is indeed a series circuit. This is a series circuit that has three resistors. I'm just going to review a little bit. I'm going to call this one R1. The subscript is used to give you information about which resistor we're talking about. So R1 is our first resistor. R2 is our second resistor. And this, of course, is our third resistor. There is a voltage source, and you will see that usually noted, noted like this in your classes. Depending on what field of study you have at uh, Dunwoody, they also sometimes call this voltage source. It really depends on your field of study. But the standard notation is E for voltage and T meaning total. So voltage total is how many negatively charged particles, electrons, are housed within the source or the voltage, uh, the battery. And that is your voltage total. Now when I offer this, if I had no positive, if you will, here, no positive charge here, there is no current flow. The, the electronic particles, these electrons, excuse me, these negatively charged electrons just sit in the battery. And when I offer them something that attracts them and pulls them from the source, which would be a positive charge, I now will have current flow. And my current will flow always negative to positive. Sometimes this is looked at a little differently in auto, and that's something that you can come up and see me one-on-one -on -one with, and I can talk to you about that. Now, as the electrons flow as fast as they can down the wire, in this case, they're going to be hitting this first resistor. And when they do, you're going to have some of the voltage drop off. So that means that you have a steady current path. You can see that there is one and only one current path, which means current is constant in the series circuit. So whatever your current total is, it will be the same constant current total over R1, R2, as well as R3. There is only one path for those electrons to travel down. And we use an I to represent current. Now I want to go back to what I had mentioned, which is some of the first uses of Ohm's law, if you will, of utilizing some of this new uh, awareness that was happening in the 1800s. And so I'm just going to talk actually something hopefully that you can relate to, which is holiday lights. So everybody has had some exposure to holiday lights. We use them to light up all kinds of things, Christmas trees in the Christian faith. We use them to decorate environments, but they're good old-fashioned holiday lights that we buy at Target. I shouldn't probably promote any store in particular. But what's happening is, if we look at these lights as being actually light bulbs on the wire, and current is flowing this direction, as the current is flowing and it hits this resistor, you will have, if you will, a voltage drop here. So some of your volts will drop off here, and then the rest will continue to flow forward. Some will drop here, and then the rest of it will drop here to give you the total voltage. So in a simple series circuit, voltage total is equal to the voltage drop over R1, the voltage drop over 
R2 plus the voltage drop over R3. And by adding these three up is one way where we can determine the total voltage. Another thing I want to talk to you about regarding this kind of circuit is the understanding of what happens when you buy holiday lights that are wired in series. They're not my favorite. So one thing I always tell my husband is, honey, please, who's a woodworker and has no consciousness with regards to Ohm's Law. We, uh, he'll buy these lights. There's 400 of them on a string. I'm just going to erase this. These are basic properties you've been exposed to. And one of the lights burns out. Now let's, again, see our flow. We've got the electrons flowing down the wire, going to the positive charge. And my light bulb uh, burns out right here. The filament breaks. I want you to notice, when this filament breaks, I have, it's like, kind of like the bridge went down. There is no way for current to flow, or if you will, to be drawn through this line of lights. Because now the positive charge that's sitting here has been disconnected because there's a break in the wire. So there will be no current flow, and all of our 400 lights wired in series are off. And this is when, unfortunately, I have to take that string of lights and I refuse to change 400 light bulbs to find the one broken filament and so it goes to the garbage. So then there was an, some experiments played out with regards and let me just let me sum this up. Right now I might still have a hundred volts to resource but there is no current flow to light up these lights. You need the flow of the electrons to come through the wire and hit these resistors to illuminate them because we harness the energy from the friction that we create with something like this. So when there is a break, again, this is called an open. The resistor here opened and the open did not allow a positive potential to pull, if you will, to let these electrons flow down the wire. There's no current flow. All the lights are off. And I'm a sad girl with holiday lights that have 400 of these things and only one is bad to not be able to use it the way I'd like. So what I do is I ask my husband, would you be so kind as to start to look at the package, pay a little more front end, you're going to pay a little more up front, but let's get something that's wired in parallel because then I will know which light is off and I will still have lights illuminated. So let's talk about parallel circuits and some of that basic consciousness.